All right, video number three, we're going to talk about basic fragmentation and unions in our electrical illustrations in Microsoft Visio that we're going through. Okay, uh, these are called the Boolean tools, and we can all just take a moment just to appreciate how hard it is for an electrical instructor to not spend time geeking out over the and and the or, the exclusive or, and stuff like that that are going to be shown inside of here, okay? We covered that inside of fourth year in logic gates. We're now going to focus on looking at these in a visual manner where we're going to combine two shapes together to create a larger one. That's going to be our and, you know, or what we're going to call union. We're going to have another one called fragmentation. We are also going to be working with tools that we learned in previous videos. So if you are having trouble keeping up with, you know, some of the alignment stuff that we're doing and the sizing, go back and pick that up, then come back and watch this. Honestly, just watch the videos all in order and it'll make way more sense. All right, let's roll in to our actual diagram. Once I find my mouse over here, I have to find, there we go. Okay, we're gonna go and build a hollow cylindrical object because it's gonna allow us to deal with fragmentation and with unionization very, very well. We're gonna start by using our ellipse tool that's gonna be up top over here. We're also gonna use our size and positioning. And we're gonna go and create one small ellipse and then what I'm going to go and do is I'm going to copy that ellipse. If I wanted to, I could draw a second ellipse that's going to be on top of here. But uh, I like to copy and paste and then resize using a corner grab so that the ratio, the length versus the width, stays the same. Otherwise, you end up with these really janky looking drawings and everybody can see that, you know, you're kind of just not doing so hot at this. Okay, so I'm going to take that second one that I just copied and pasted. And I'm going to go and place that thing out there. Now I'm I can make it go and do the auto align because I've got that turned on in mind, you know, so I can see these uh, snap lines here, but I'm not gonna deal with that quite yet because I wanna go and carry out a couple of components. This is gonna be the center part of our hollow cylinder. This is gonna be the top part of our hollow cylinder. And then I'm gonna copy and paste that control C, control V, so that I have now got a bottom part to that cylinder there as well. Okay, first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this, which is gonna be our hole through. We're gonna go and combine it with this one over here. And we want to go and bring these things together to become center. Remember, first one we click is priority. We click on that one and then we'll just do that alignment like we saw in the last one. We'll align that to center, then we'll align it to the middle. Now we have got it perfectly centered inside of there. The next thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna continue using this shape over here as our master shape, and we're gonna go and line this second piece up with it as well. So I'm holding down control. I'm gonna click on this one to select the second one, and I'm going to go and align center. Now I've got this thing partially done. Some of you at this point, I know desperately wanna just take a line and draw one down from there to there or something like that. Don't do it. It's a path to frustration. Instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go and create a rectangle. We're gonna make this rectangle with some throwaway parts because you know, digital stuff, digital assets are free, basically. What we're gonna do is we're gonna take this size of ellipse that we have over here. If I take a look at my size and position window, which was in the last video, we see that it's 30 millimeters wide. The height I'm not too concerned about, but I'm going to go and match the width of this with the width of this that I can properly use a fragmentation and union tool. So I go over to this one now. Now I'm gonna check the width of this one. And if I take a look, I see the width is already 30 mils, but if it wasn't, I would just type in 30 over there and hit enter. And now it would be the exact same. Okay, last thing that we're gonna do now is we're gonna take this and we are going to go and align this to the center. Whoa, and this crazy thing happens where all of a sudden we lose everything else because this was the last shape that we drew. It's at the front, the others are still back there. We'll kick this one to the back and we'll explain that layering thing in the next video. This is what we have. We've got a 30 mil wide, rectangle we've got 30 mil wide ellipses that we have over here and what we have is all four of these components are aligned to center okay let's take a look at this new section that we're going to look at these are the boolean operators over here they're called union combined fragment you will not be able to use these until you have more than one shape selected union would go and mash all of these together Combine cuts out an overlap. I hardly ever use that. Fragment breaks it into all the smaller pieces. Intersect only leaves you with crosses over and subtract, subtracts, and really honestly causes more glitches than anything inside of here. So let's go to the fragment. Fragment and union are going to be your two most common ones. When I hit fragment, what's going to happen is that this shape is going to break apart on every complete line from where a line, in this case the top line of that oval, intersects with this line over here, it would be able to break this whole section off. I'll be able to have that section, this section, etc. Watch what happens. We grab it. 
I hit fragment, doesn't appear to be much, but now when I select each of these, what I can do, and I'll just do this just to go and show is that look, every single one of these is going to go and be a different component. If I fill these things, you can see that each of them easily fills with different colors inside of there, meaning that these things must each be their own individual discrete shape that has been broken apart out of the main shape that we had over there. Okay, it's ugly like this, but it was just to show that these things have now been broken apart from one to now a whole pop. Kind of looks like an avocado, sort of. Anyways, let's go and throw away the parts we don't need, and then we're going to work on combining the rest of our cylinders. I'm going to grab this one here. I'm going to grab this one here. At this point, I've thrown those two away and we see that. I'm just going to put everything back to white fill. More or less, we have got a cylindrical shape. This looks like the top of a cylinder. However, this part here looks like the bottom of a cylinder, or bottom of a well or something like that. It's kind of awkward looking. What we want to do now is we want to use another tool called Union. And Union is going to allow me to take two shapes, in this case, this one and this one, and meld them together. So once again, I'm going to grab one, hold down control, click on the second. Now I've got two grab. And I'm going to go back up here and I'm going to hit union. Boom. And when I hit union, it just magically welds those two pieces together. Occasionally, you'll get little artifacts, little lines in between. And sometimes you have to hit union like three or four times for Visio to respond. But usually that's going to go and take care of creating that. What we have now is a complete section. If I take a look, I can break this thing apart. You can see we've got just this hollowed out section. Each of these is a complete discrete unit. I'm just going to hit undo, undo, bring those all back. We'll finish up the cylinder. Just a couple laws of shading. Laws of shading are going to be the top surface. At least they're not laws, maybe, but my personal rules for making decent looking drawings is the top is going to be the lightest color. You're then going to go and pick a shade darker on either your right or a shade darker on your left. And then you can go and make anything that's hollowed out or central even darker yet. We'll make this thing look legit. If I take a darker gray over here, a lighter gray, we're going to be able to change any one of those. So I'll pick this one up top here because of the top surface. I'll make that really light. I'm going to go and make my side walls always one shade darker. And anything that is going to go and be in the center, I usually make the darkest variant. And like that, we have now created a relatively pictorial cylindrical shape using that fragment and that combined shape. You do need to know that if you overlap sections, they will fragment. If I go back to this, if I would take a look at this and have a larger uh, ellipse than what I would have for my actual rectangle over here, when I would go and fragment this, what would then happen is it's going to break into multiple shapes. This piece over here is going to get broken off as an ear, same with this piece over here gets broken off as an ear because they're not the same way. That's why we like to use that size of position window to make sure that everything is the same exact size on these. All right, we'll delete that one for now. Uh, it is a very, very handy component to go and use. Now that we've created this cylinder, we have got one more component that we are going to create out of it under fragmentation unions, and that is gonna be our standard Phillips or sorry, Robertson head screw. All right, zooming back out over here. We're gonna do this one more time and I'm gonna show you the beauty of using these tools over here. If I take a look, I've created a circle, more or less, it's not quite correct because it's 15.7 by 15.6. I'll just make that 16 and I will go and create that as 16 and hit enter. Saves that, now I've got this thing as a true circle. What we're then going to do is we're going to go and create a slot that we're gonna be able to place across that screw. And then we are going to go and create that Robertson head and watch this, this is fun. At least I think it's fun. You know, we'll make this thing here eight by eight. And when I do that, then I'm going to kick it out to 45 degrees. And when I do that, now we've got that placed over there. I can now grab all of these. I don't care which is master right now. I'm going to align center. I'm going to go and align middle. Once I do that, I've got them all overlapped like this. Oh man, this is slick. We are then going to go and hit fragment. Boom. Fragmentation happens. It breaks into parts. I'm going to cut off those two extra chunks that I have over there. And then I'm going to grab just a bunch of smaller chunks. I'm going to zoom in. I'm going to grab that piece, that piece, that piece, that piece, and that piece. And now I'm going to go and unionize. And would you look at that? We have now got, well, it's a relatively large slot on this one, but we have got a Robertson screw that is ready for us to go and utilize. We're going to do a little bit more with this Robertson screw in our next one. I'm going to go with a darker color for anything that's inset. 
I'm going to work on the same palette and I'll go with a lighter color for anything that's towards the surface. And that's a relatively pictorial looking screw that we would have. All right, that's the end for this one.